This is a big one. So a lot of people have been asking the questions about what's the plan going forward for me. Hey guys, even here, and as you can see, we have some breaking news for this video today. Samson Dauda moved to Kuwait and to the oxygen gym, and no, he did not go there just as a tourist. You're gonna see, you're gonna hear what he has to say in the rest of the story. No, he is over there, and that's it, that's the deal. Basically, this whole time, ever since he parted ways with Milos Archev, everybody was wondering who's gonna be his next coach, what he's gonna do, what his next plan is, and now we got it. He finally revealed it, it's gonna be the Oxygen Gym, the Kuwait. Who's gonna coach him? I believe it's gonna have to be somebody from the Oxygen Gym, that's usually how it works. They provide you the gym facilities and like everything else, food, uh, money, whatever. I'm sure they're paying him a lot of money to go over there. And they're also providing you a coach, so I guess it's gonna be probably somebody like uh, Ahmad Askar or like Abdullah, but I think Abdullah moved away from the Oxygen Gym. Somebody like that, somebody from their team. Before we continue, before I tell you what I think about this whole thing, let me show you the rest of Samson's stories and let's hear what he had to say. So a lot of people have been asking the questions about what's the plan going forward for me. And uh, there have been a lot of... Uh, and I said this week is gonna be a big week. So... Uh, a few weeks ago, I was reached out to a gentleman that we all know, and he asked me to um, come check out his gym. So last night we caught on a flight, and uh, <laughs> I'm sure you guys recognize this gym over here. Yeah, ladies and gentlemen, we're in Kuwait and we're at Oxygen Gym, and yeah, this is happening. Yeah, this is happening. All right. Uh, let's go get a workout. Let's go get our first workout in the uh, oxygen gym in Kuwait. Let's do it. All right, all right, you heard it. So basically, as he says, a lot of people have been asking him what's the plan from now on. Uh, and uh, he was approached by Badr Budai a couple of weeks ago. And he decided to go to Kuwait. And yeah, this is happening. He's in Kuwait at the oxygen gym. Which I think is really awesome, especially from the training equipment uh, perspective. But still, you gotta start the arm day with some rope extensions for triceps, of course. Uh, later, he's gonna try some other equipment you're gonna see. So basically, yeah, that, that's a really good part, of course. He has great uh, training equipment and it's gonna be awesome for training and like for staying focused. If he stays over there the whole time, you know, just uh, focused on bodybuilding, eating, sleeping and training. Uh, a lot of bodybuilders made great progress over there. But, 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 the biggest thing with Samson is, as we all know, as we repeated a million times by now, conditioning. It's not size. What Samson needs is three hours of cardio, and that's it, really. I think training-wise, he was good. He was already fine back home, really. I mean, he was making solid progress. Uh, not just year after year, but like season after season, show after show, he was getting bigger and better, and he was making solid progress, and uh, he got to the point where he didn't need any more progression, really. He was, he is big enough, complete enough, he has a back, he has it all, really. What he needs right now is crazy conditioning, and are these guys in Kuwait known for bringing the guys in extra crispy? No, quite the opposite. Those guys in Kuwait are known for bringing the guys as big as possible, for helping the guys grow and maybe come to the show as full as possible, but as far as coming in conditioned, Oxygen Gym guys are not the way to go. I remember when uh, Chris Asito was prepping Big Ramy. At the time, Big Ramy was at the Camel Crew or the Oxygen Gym Crew, and they were actually forcing uh, him to carb up harder than what Chris Asito wanted him to do. You know, they wanted him to be as big as full as possible. Big Ramy was under a lot of pressure. He had his coach who was telling him to do one thing and his crew, his sponsors, telling him to do something else. They were mixing themselves into the decisions. Uh, so basically, I mean, it's not the point. The point is they want to see the guys as big as possible. That's their thing. Everybody who goes to Kuwait gets massive and they look super full and big on the stage, but they don't come in condition. So... Why did Samson choose this? I have no idea, honestly. Uh, I'm guessing there is a lot of money involved. And I'm thinking maybe at this point, maybe he knew about this long before those couple of weeks, as he says. Maybe Badr Dubai approached him a long time ago and offered him some crazy amount of money. 
to just stop working with Milos Archer and go to the Kuwait and be their guy, you know, market them, promote them, like Brandon Curry is doing, but Brandon Curry is no longer winning Mr. Olympias. This guy might do that in the future. So hopefully, and I'm honestly hoping because I'm a big fan of Samson's physique, I want to see it shredded for once. Hopefully, they just made a deal for Samson to go over there, maybe be there for a while and come back and come back again and promote those guys, but actually be coached by another coach. Somebody like Chris Asito, I think would be an amazing idea. Somebody like that who is known for bringing guys in super conditioned or somebody like Patrick Tour or Stefan Kinzel, somebody like that, but being coached by somebody from the Oxygen Gym, I don't know how is that going to work out. I don't think that's the smartest call. Maybe he's going to prep alone or like with the help of his wife, but he's going to stay over there. I'm not sure what is the plan. If he clears things out, I'm going to make a video about that as well. So guys, stay tuned and tell me what do you think about this collab down below in the comment section. All right, the next thing is very interesting. One of the Instagram pages made this comparison between Nick Walker and Quinton Araya, both guys competing at the New York Pro in a couple of weeks. And I thought it was an interesting comparison, of course. Of course, Nick is destroying Quinton here uh, from the front, too. Even though Quinton is very good from the front, I mean, now he's much better. This is an older version, of course, two years ago. He got much, much bigger. But still, Nick was still better, even from the front. However, from the back, it was it was not even funny. Obviously, as you can see, Quinton's back was a really big issue for him. It was just so shallow. It was just way too small for, like, the top open guys. As you can see, Nick's back is just a whole different level. Again, this was Quinton from two years ago. Now he's much bigger, much better, much improved. And today he finally showed us his back. Actually, his coach, Matt Jansen, posted this. I don't know if Quint was even okay with this, but as you can see, the back is... Uh, I think it's better. It's probably better. It's not back double bicep pose. You know, a lot of guys who have a weak back and look bad in the back double bicep, but like have wide shoulders, small waist, which is what Quinton has, can make their back lat spread look fine, look good, even though the back is not there. So I think that's what's going on. I don't think he improved his back double bicep uh, that much. I think it is better, but I think it's still gonna be a weak point, a big time weak point. Some time ago, he did post a back update. It was, you know, at the point when he was still kind of fluffy, but I thought maybe once he gets lean, you know, the back is the kind of muscle that just looks very impressive when you get leaner. Uh, so I thought maybe when he gets leaner, his back is going to look uh, better. But I mean, yeah, it will. It, I'm sure it does. But to what extent? Like, does this back look like it can be compared to somebody like Nick Walker? I mean, let's be real, or Martin Fitzwater, or Tony Burton. I don't think so. I really doubt that. I don't think it's on that level. However, from the front, this shot is the most recent one. He does look really impressive. That we taper, man, it's something you don't see very often. Like uh, Such a small waist, uh, such crazy looking arms, and also shape of the legs. Maybe the quads are not the biggest, you know? I mean, he's very tall. That femur bone is very long, so, you know, those quads are never going to look, like, super round like some other guys. I mean, maybe someday, but, like, not, not not right now. He needs more muscle. But, like, the way it all flows with those small joints, it does look very cartoonish. looks very impressive. reminds me of Flex Wheeler. So, yeah, I mean, this guy is definitely a dark horse. He can, he can do some damage. He can beat some of these guys, even though he doesn't have a back. With his frame, with his structure, with his uh, size, like overall on the stage, he, I think he has a chance of placing second. Best case scenario. And that would be a big surprise also. What do you guys think? Tell me down below. Alright, we also got a little physique update from John Jewett at 10.5 weeks out of one Coomer Pro. So John Jewett this year is going to be doing only open division last year he did a 212 show he qualified for the mr olympia but after that show he also did an open show legion sports fest uh, where charles griffin won and qualified for the mr olympia and i believe john joyd was second at this show 
or third, I'm not sure if he beat the Justin Rodriguez or placed second here. But this was his uh, open debut. I don't think he ever competed in open before this. And he was heavier. Here he was like, I think, 219, 220, something like that. So he was like 8 pounds heavier. And I think he looked overall much better. You know, fuller, rounder, bigger. Overall, a better look. He was definitely struggling to make the weight for 212. And this was when he made the decision to quit the 212. Even though he was qualified for the 212 Olympia, he decided not to do it. He just started his offseason right here. And this is the progress he made. Right now, he's about 240. So with this conditioning, 240, I can see this guy competing at like 230. I mean, really, he was really lean this entire prep. He didn't, he didn't gain a lot of, almost any fat, really. He was just a little bit fluffier, a little bit more watery, but I don't see any fat, really. So maybe 10 more pounds to go, tops. I think he's gonna end up at like 2, 230, or maybe, maybe 225, at least, at least, I mean, with better conditioning, which I think is also a great progress for one shorter off-season. How well will he do at one cooler pro? I have no idea who else is competing, we'll see, but if he was second at Legion, and Vancouver Pro is usually not like the most stacked show, I can see him again in the top 3, I have a feeling that somebody like Hassan Mustafa might do the Vancouver, can he beat him and win, qualify for the Mr. Olympia Open this year? It's possible, not super likely, but definitely a possibility, I mean John is always in great condition, he's never off really, and with these new improvements, you know, he, he, will, do, he will do well, he will look good I'm sure. Whatever you guys think, tell me down below in the comment section. If you guys enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up. For more content like this, guys, please subscribe to the channel. Thank you so much for watching. See you soon. All the best and bye-bye.